uh, he's all traced out and ready to be put down on Bristol board and cut out and now I have the two dancers oh, let me back you off a little bit there we go I have the two dancers to do and Elvis and let's see no, yeah, that, yeah, it's okay. But yeah, you can see it. You know, once you get the, you get your tracing paper up on here, and then you can just start tracing out all the artwork. Like I said, the blues are the light blue is already done. It just needs cut out. So I will continue on tracing the characters. This one I'm gonna have to kind of kind of guess a little bit because the scratch is right on the line uh, most of this I can get up into here and then the rest of it it's kinda gonna have to be a be a freehand guess as to what it's supposed to be the other sides just as bad uh, they had it's cut out and everything so now I got all my tracings done uh, this is the this is the uh, back back box. You can see we'll have our dark blue and our white blue, the white blue, light blue. And that was taken right off of there. Uh, this is our dark blue for our cabinet. There's uh, Elvis. There's the dancers. On. and Charlie that's our dark blue and then we have our light blue for our cabinet there the stars now the the front here around the coin door I had to make a complete stencil for the whole front get over there and I'll show you why because our lights our lighting you can see how tall this one is or this one comes all the way up you're only a couple of inches away from the uh, lockdown bar on this side now the other side they moved it down because of the shooter a lot of times these companies just put it just made it opposite of that of this side and wherever the shooter ended up in their artwork they didn't care well Chicago coin kinda moved it down a little bit we have our start button in the light but we're not cutting off the the whole top of the light for the uh, shooter and I looked this up these are the the light beams that come all the way across and, and come into about here and this side I was able to see where it ended and then the center piece here is just blue that'll just be blue the dark blue so that's all the tracings and like I said that side is the same as this side only you just take your you paint here Paint through, paint over your stencil, and take your stencil, and bring it right around. Put your paint up against this side of the cabinet, and then you can paint it, and it will be the same. After you let the paint dry, of course, on your stencil. <laughs> so that's all the tracings. We got all the tracings done, and now the fun begins of cutting them all out into stencils oh, that's about a about a day's worth of work there cutting stencils because I take breaks <laughs> my hands cramp up and I have to have to stop for a while 
But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back on the cart and start working on doing the body work on this. Getting it all sanded down and filled in where it needs filled for, for painting white. Now on this one they, they did a kind of a splatter, but it's kind of a cobweb, cobweb splatter, big blotches on it. And we're not doing that. This is just going to be a nice clean white cabinet when I'm done. And then we'll put our artwork on it. So I think now it's time to get started on bodywork. We'll start getting this sanded down and filled. All right, now we got got it ready for paint. Got everything all filled in as much as I'm going to. You know, it's a pinball machine. It's not a classic car. But I wanted to get the, a lot of the deep scratches out of it and make it, you know, look as, as good as we can. I got the bottom cabinet ready. Now the back box, I'm still doing some work on it. Let's see, I, let me grab it. I peeled off, I took off the, what little bit was left of what holds, holds the back glass in, that goes on there. What I used was I stopped down at my hardware store and I got some 3 8 inch square stock. This one is 3 16 by half inch. You know, 3 16 half inch. So I just went with uh, 3 8 square stock. Uh, half inch was too big. It would cover up a little too much of the back glass along the bottom. So we just did that. I think that it'll be good. Um, might have to put a little bit of foam so it doesn't rattle back and forth at the bottom, which is okay. And see this bottom piece was all was gone. So I plugged it with the rest of the what I had left of that quarter inch stock. I plugged it in there and then we I have to work on the corners and we'll get the corners all squared away. Um, <laughs> I had the back box already. I put it up on my cart to work on it and the one end fell off and the whole thing fell apart. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> had two pieces, I had two L's. And so I got her all glued back together and I'll show you again. See I put the the braces in there and up in there. I just cut a 45 out of the corner of a 2x4 and that made my corners. Got that all glued together. So it's coming along. Like I said, I still got some work to do on it. But since the bottom cabinet's ready to paint, I'm gonna paint it and then it can I can stand it up and it can sit and cure for however long I feel it needs to cure before we start stenciling it and putting our other colors on it. And then I can finish up on the back box, get it all squared away and painted white. Which will be in this episode. I'll uh, once I get, I'll come back and show you after I get this all white, and then I'll uh, start working on that back box, and I'll bring you back uh, from time to time and show you my progress on that back box and what it's going to look like when we're done with it. So now it's time for me ah, to put some color on this and see how it's going to look. Now you can see where I put this put that lip on there for the back glass to sit behind. Uh, like I said I may have to, it's a little little narrower than I, I would like but the 
the height, the height was good. So I think what I'm going to do is I may have to put a piece of foam or something down in there, kind of fill the gap so the back glass doesn't rattle. We'll see once we get it in what we have to do. Uh, corners, now I'm going to fix up all the corners on the front of this because, you know, that's what gets seen the most. And all four corners are a little, a little rough looking. So we'll get them fixed up. And you know, when you're looking right at the machine, this is what you see. When you're playing and looking up at your score and when you're walking by them, you see that most of all is the face here in the back glass. Uh, most of the time your eyes are um, trained to the back glass, so you really don't see the, see some of this, but this is pretty pretty rough looking, so we're gonna we're gonna fix up those corners so it it looks a lot better. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna the seam's gonna show up when I paint on both the bottom and the top, but I don't know what if I'm gonna go ahead and fill it or what. Uh, I'm gonna sand on this a little bit more to get this down get some of the chipped paint out of it and get it smoothed out a little bit better. This is pretty smooth here. You're going to see a little bit of it once I paint it. Uh, but the corners, see once you start filling the corner, if there is a little bit of a, a seam in here, your filler will fill it and then you'll have it filled it'll be nice and smooth and then you'll have a little crease all the way across that line to wherever you filled over here so that's and same with at the top that's why I said I'm not I'm not opposed to just uh, filling that right straight across there to fill in that little seam as well so it's all seamless because that's pretty much what you what it's supposed to be anyway. It should be all seamless. But we got the got our cabinet sitting over here uh, curing. <laughs> uh, it turned out turned out nice. You know, there's going to be some imperfections and some flaws in it, but like I said, it's not a classic car. It's a pinball machine, and most of these cabinets weren't meant to be spotless and perfect. Give it a little character, anyway. So now let's uh, let's get busy. We got to get this um, done up and in primer, so we can get it painted white, and then it can sit over there with the cabinet and let them. I'll let them cure for for a couple three four days maybe even a week before I wet sand it because it's cold so it's going to take a little longer for that to really harden up good to withstand some wet sanding and re and painting over it so now let's get busy here and get this done so we can get it in primer and painted and let it sit and then I can <clears throat> come back and keep working on my stencils. Uh, let's see, I got, got this one. I got looks like Elvis. <laughs> got that one done. Uh, I got the two dancers to do. This is our dark blue and then Charlie or whoever he is. And that'll be our dark blue and then I got to start working on our light blue, our stars, and that little little whoop de doo along the bottom and those I keep thinking they're curtains since it's a cinema up there but we'll see. <laughs> Alright, time to get busy. Stop talking and get to work. Ah, our base coat has been curing for Oh, probably almost two weeks now. In fact, I think it's been two weeks. 
maybe. I don't know. Anyway, uh, I got it wet sanded and, and I'm ready to put on the first color, which uh, this is the one I kind of picked out the first time, which is a, a Lagoon. It's a satin finish, but I wasn't worried about the satin because it, once it's clear coated, it'll shine. But I don't know, I kept looking at this and that that's an awful dark. So I'm, I'm leaning more towards this seaside, kind of a, it's a, you know, it has a little bit of a blue in it. It's kind of a turquoise, I guess, color. Uh, I couldn't get just a light, light blue because I, I don't know, I really didn't want, you know, light blue. It kind of makes, I don't know, just not a big fan of it. Uh, let me get over here. Okay, here's the... This is a picture online. That cabinet's is about as filthy as mine was. But you can see it it's kind of a turquoise. But I don't know if it's supposed to be blue or what. Let's close that one. That was the right side. Oh uh, let's take a look at the there's the cabinet. See, and uh, the dancers and all that on this one is more of a, a green. Where when I was done cleaning our cabinet, it was a, a darker blue. So that, that's why I went with this lighter, this lighter seaside. I think that's what we're going to use on that is seaside. And then our... Our second one, I'm going to use just the regular dark blue. This deep blue is going to be our figures. I think that's going to turn out good. Like I said, it's so hard to tell what the colors were actually supposed to be when, you know, when it was new. So, But that, no, nah, I think that's going to be too... Too much. I don't know. Too dark. You have that, and then this blue will be on top of it, or on the sea foam. I like it on the sea foam better. Our star will be sea foam, and then we have the two heads here, and on that star, and then the dancing, the two dancing couples, are right in the middle. That'll be the blue, and what you see here, star. Uh, these humps, humps, and that star, and those little curtain-like things at the top there will all be that seaside. So I think it's going to stand out pretty good. I mean, it's not going to look like it, like it's brand new because probably I know the colors are wrong. But you can only use what you can get. So I got a little bit of a little more work to do. Taping up a few things here. Just kind of cover our bottom of our cabinet here so when I get down this way I'm not putting that light blue here along that edge. Alright. So I'll bring you back when I have the color on it and we'll see what it looks like. I have the back box ready for its seaside and we'll, when I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like ah, that's the <coughs> second coat now we have our our base coat white and our sea, seaside <laughs> looks turquoise to me but we have our nice sea size sea size yeah seaside on here and on one side of our back box. I only do these one side at a time. It's, it, it's too hard to try and get a stencil to hang unless you actually have, you're cutting it out of uh, wood or Luwan or something like that. So I have to use, I use the Bristol board. I, I can put it down flat and weight it down and get some of our lines a little crisper. Uh, now when I 
wet sand this. Uh, I will clean up. We will get some of this cleaned up. It's not going to, you know, look, it, it's going to have a little bit of feathering here and there. But I, I can get a lot of this cleaned up with wet sand in it. I wet sand it with a thousand grit. It, I think it's going to, it'll look a lot better anyway than what it was, that old dingy crap brown. It's going to look nice and clean. Uh, I had had a little a boo boo <laughs> when I was getting ready to paint. I had a piece come off, and it's like, eh, the hell with it. That just gives it more character. <laughs> but now I'll I'll go ahead and wet sand this, and I'll show you afterwards uh, how much of this I can get cleaned up with wet sanding, and it'll look a little. The lines will look a little sharper and they'll be a little bit feathered out. So let's do some more wet sanding on this and and see what we can come up with. One thing though is uh, once I do get the, uh, this side all done with our third color, our last color, I can stand this up and then I can uh, let that cure a while and then I could go ahead and I can do the the face here. I may even just, I may do the front and now I'm going to have to let this sit for a while because I can't turn that over then. Uh, the paint will still be just a little bit too soft and it'll, uh, when it, from it sitting on it, it'll mark it up. That's why I have to let this sit for a while too. I can't just uh, get my third color on and then flip it over and get started on the other side. I have to let this set up a little bit. Uh, so uh, when I do turn it over and set it on its side, we're not imprinting rug marks on it. Because <laughs> it, it will. It, it takes a little while for this to set up and harden real, real good. Or harden real well. Or harden at all. Or harden a lot. Okay. Let me wet sand this and we'll take a look at it after I get it done. And as you can see, a lot of the um, overspray is what I call it. I, get, I don't know if you want to call it overspray or not. I got a little bit through there I need to get rid of. Uh, you can get sanded out. You know, it's just a little light, light mist of paint that kind of goes under the stencil and most of it you can get wet sanded out depending on how how thick your paint is. Uh, this one, uh, our base coat, we have three. I have three coats of white on here. Now the blue, I went with just two because it started getting kind of ignorant on me in a few spots. So I didn't want to press my luck. And I wanted three of the white because you're going to be wet sanding, you know, two times after the after the base coat. Two, one, two, three times. You have to wet sand it, then you put your blue on, then you wet sand it again, put the dark blue on it, and then wet sand again. Uh, I don't wet sand out in here because I already did that for our for our dancing characters, uh, but I do, you know, you do have to do the stars and through here because the dancing characters, their leg, their feet come down into here and we have our um, characters or characters, whatever. One goes over our star in the front, one goes over the star in the back, so you have to wet sand that again. But in turn, you're still doing some of the white again. So you got to have enough paint on it to to get it covered, and when you wet sand, you don't go through uh, the side of the back box. Like I said, it's good. Uh, I got that cleaned up, and on our back box here, we have the character, the, the head, and then our two lights come up in here and shine down. 
so that will we got that one ready now all I have to do is get my stencils all put on and and get it ready and get it warm enough in here to to paint and the problem with you know when you start wet sanding is if you have stuff in your paint it's gonna come through it's gonna show you know there was a couple little specks of dirt in my paint and then when you wet sand it shows the dirt but it's gonna be what it is folks it's gonna be a repainted cabinet I don't claim to be a, <clears throat> a great painter but I can do enough to make them look decent and this one absolutely needed done I have another one coming up that we'll be doing the whole cabinet on so that one will be fun too uh, on these cabinets if it's a simple artwork you know like this where you only have two colors and you have some just some basic shapes and some characters or and that I can do but like if you get into like uh, Knight Rider Bally I mean I could do it but man that that's just a lot a lot a lot of work to redo that whole cabinet back box would be nothing but to put the truck and the Knight Rider in you're looking at a lot of lot of work so on a lot of those if I can if I can match the paint and touch them up I'm better off but you know most all these machines are gonna be sitting side by side in the arcade so you're not gonna you're not really gonna see them but you know this this thing just was so stinking dingy and nasty looking that I had to do something with it and to me this was the best thing to do now somebody else uh, they may decide not to do it and just clean it and leave it the way it is but uh, I kinda like my machines to look a little better than what that one did that's for sure uh, we have another Chicago coin sitting over there that I'm pretty sure we'll need the cabinet done on it you can see there's the there's the other one and there's that one there but um that one has quite a quite a bit of artwork that uh, may be a little too much for me to do so we won't know until we get to it and that's many many moons down the road on that one uh, that that Chicago coin may be one of the last ones I do because I may get enough of uh, painting with a couple of these and may not want to do another one for a while. But now uh, I'll get my stencil set up so we can get our last bit of stenciling done on that side of the cabinet and that side of the back box. And then, like I said, I can let this start setting up and curing really good. And we can do the face around the coin door. There's not much to do here. The stencils are pretty basic. There's just a couple of lights, uh, light stands, and some light beams going down on either side. And so that, that'll be easy. We can get that one knocked out in no time and then once this sets up enough then we can flip everything and and get get the other side done and get this buttoned up and ready for Mac boards I'll probably clear coat um, well I know I'll clear coat but I'll probably I'm gonna use rattle can uh, clear coat on the cabinet for the simple fact is uh, the other the clear coat that I use on the play field is water base and the play fields don't get much moisture if they're all buttoned up like they should be. So they're, you know, you won't have any problems with that. But on the cabinet itself, just from sitting during the summer with humidity and all that, we could have some problems with it, uh, with the clear coat on it. 
so we'll use rattle can clear coat on it and get it all cleared up and all cleared up yep we'll get her all cleared up we'll get it cleared and it'll be ready so let me start getting my stencil put on and I'll, I'll probably bring you back and show you what how that stencil is laying out and how it's going to look. Uh, got the stencil on where I want it. Now all I have to do is weight down a bunch of my edges and work on a few little areas here and there. And hopefully I can get the garage warm, warm enough today so I can paint. That's our stencil there and then on the side of our back box so I'll get this all weighted down and get it ready anyway so when it does if or when it gets warm enough out here I'll go ahead and shoot our dark blue on see I gotta get this weighted down it's hanging up too far so I'll work on that and when it's warm enough we'll paint I'll bring you back after I got it all done okay my friends there it is another complete cabinet repaint and trust me it's it's not without its flaws I could sit here for a half an hour and show you all my flaws in it and some screw-ups that I did but she's all painted and clear coated. This side actually looks better. Oh, I gotta. It's. There we are. Now it's done! What do you think about that? Even saved the old uh, tag. But now I didn't paint the butt. It's got a dirty butt. But yeah, she still got some crud on it from me pulling tape. But yeah, I am very, very pleased with it. I hope you like it as much as I do. Now the fun part. Now we can start putting it together. <laughs> but I think I think this old machine deserves it. Uh, not too many people give the Chicago coins a lot of love. So this one is getting all the love it deserves. I got another one sitting right there. Big old nasty cabinet with a nasty play field sitting back there. And nasty back box sitting there. I'm missing a lot of parts on this one. This one's going to be probably sitting for quite a while before I can actually get to it unless somebody out there knows where I can get a complete score motor for it uh, that's gonna be the hardest if I find a, a score motor for it the rest of it will come together I can I can put it together so it's a 1975 Chicago coin top 10 is the name of it and if anybody out there, the 76, it's all covered up, my Mac panel. 
Oh, maybe I can get to it so I can show you. This is one of the the flat ones, and of course it's at the other end. But that guy right there is what I need. This is a 76, and as far as I know, they used them in the 70s, but I think the 60s are, are different. But we'll at least we'll get this one together and then I'll continue to look for parts for top 10 because I, that one's going to be another nice drawn out project there that I'll, I'll work on as much as I can. I hate to you know get started on it and then have to put it in a corner half done while I wait for a score motor. I like to secure a score, score motor for it first and then then I can tackle it so like I said if anybody knows where there's a anybody has one or knows somebody that has one uh, leave a comment in the description or or my I'll leave my email address in the description below and you can email me and let me know if you know somebody or if you have one that you want to sell. So that's going to do it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I enjoy turning these old nasty cabinets into something that looks decent. So until next time. See ya.